been 12 years, but Duke is finally back and ready for action. Let's see how Gearbox Software handled this highly anticipated sequel to the classic Duke Nukem 3D. I'm back, baby. Just as the game took 12 years to release, the story of the game also picks up 12 years after the events of Duke Nukem 3D. After fending off the alien invasion from the previous title, Duke transcended to stardom and has been living a life of booze, babes, and luxury. Now, of course, aliens have returned and are once again trying to take over the Earth and turn our women into octo babies, since the rest of mankind seems to be entirely incompetent. Uh, uh, prophet? Right! It's once again up to Duke to save the day. Run! What the fuck? That's really all the depth there is to this story. But then again, Duke games have never really been about the story. You wanna touch it, don't you? The Duke himself is just as cocky as ever, and he still has plenty of one-liners to throw at his alien foes. What's the matter? You got sand in your vagina? He even takes a few cracks at some other gaming icons. Power armor is for pussies. Um, well, okay. As far as the environment goes, the designers could have done a little better. Some areas look alright, but others are bland and feel kinda empty. It might have been safer if they stuck to small spaces and corridors, as they seem to do a better job with this type of environment. Though there are a couple of spots you might get hung up on, the game is not extremely difficult. On the other hand, I'd put the learning curve at about a half hour or so, which is a little steeper than usual because the game does not play like a typical shooter. In a market dominated by military shooters, Duke Nukem Forever still plays and feels a lot like its 90s counterpart. You'll spend a lot of your time side strafing, ducking behind corners, and just plain running in them. This did throw me off a little at first, but once I got my bearings, my frustration was replaced by a welcome sense of nostalgia. Suck it down. Adding to that sense of nostalgia is the ability to interact with most in-game objects, much like you could in Duke 3D. Though there are a lot more options this time around. What the hell? No! Come on, no! For all its old school style though, there's still a few modern features that made their way into the game. Among these are regenerating health, and being limited to only carrying two weapons at a time. While I do miss my health packs, I'm glad I don't have to cycle through a dozen weapons to find the one I'm looking for. I can't say if the PC allows hotkeys or not, because I played on the PS3 version. The game definitely earns its mature rating. When Duke's not getting drunk in his strip club, he's getting lap dances, shake it baby, going on roid rages, and making crude jokes. You must make a good hero sandwich, cause you're giving me a foot long. Most of these actions have positive effects. Steroids and beer are power items which give you added strength and endurance. While first time interactions with the environment such as gambling and watching porn gives Duke a permanent boost to his ego, which is effectively his health. It's everything you would expect from a Duke game, and not something you should be buying for the kids. Though I'm sure there are plenty of parents who will ignore the rating and complain later. Duke Nukem Forever runs on the Unreal Engine. For the most part, the game really doesn't look impressive graphically. For a game that's been in production so long, there's much that seems rushed and underdeveloped. The thing that stood out most to me was the lack of consistency. Some areas were well done and looked fine, but others didn't even seem finished. At times I felt like I was playing two different games that had been pieced together. Even though it didn't always look pretty, the game did play smoothly. There were some choppy shadows and the water disappeared on me once, but other than that I didn't really have any problems. There isn't much good to say about the multiplayer in this game. The maps are dull and boring and the gameplay is frantic. I spent a long time just waiting to get in matches, and when I finally did most of them had infinite ammo which meant infinite pipe bombs, infinite devastator, all you really had to do was hold down the trigger and walk around. The ability to customize your character is always a plus, and unlocking decorations for your apartment suite is a cool idea, but I just couldn't bring myself to stomach more than a few matches. I can't recommend the multiplayer when there are so many better options available, and many of them for a fraction of the price. Despite the horrid multiplayer and a few technical drawbacks in the campaign, I enjoyed my time with Duke Nukem Forever. In the end, it does feel like a classic Duke game on a modern engine, and that's really all I was hoping for. The game isn't revolutionary, and it won't be turning people's heads by any means, but if you're a Duke Nukem fan, it's definitely worth a playthrough.
Hail to the king, baby.